famous in Israel. Are you kidding me? I love this. And he shall, he, listen to this now. This is the man child. He shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture. Here's another one. 1 Samuel chapter 11. Here again, we have two women. Okay, We have um, Hannah and Peninnah. Peninnah, she's having lots of kids. Hannah is barren. She has no children whatsoever. And she cries unto the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give into thine hand a man-child. Look at that. We're going to see that again. A man-child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Look at there. There it is again. And no razor, and shall no razor come upon his head. He was a Nazarite too. He was pointing in the direction of Jesus Christ through the law. Look at verse 19. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel. I want you to notice the letters E-L there. That's, that's the first part of God's name, Elohim. Called his name Samuel, be, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. You see, not only is this child been promised, he's been asked for. He's been prayed for. I, I believe in the restoration of the Israelites in the last days. A remnant of the twelve tribes. They're going to ask for their Messiah to come, to be born, and he will be. Uh, look at here. Here's another one. Just and follow the follow the picture. And by the way, Samuel, just a prophet before the Lord. It's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we go to to David. We have another promise here because God had promised that a line would come through the the seed of David in in Isaiah chapter 11. And so in Second Samuel chapter 11, I want you to notice this. David, uh, in his sin, and here's the thing about it. When Jesus came the first time, he came with like the sin of his forefathers laid upon him. Okay? including David. David sinned with Bathsheba. You remember David went out, he lusted at Bathsheba, he called her unto him, he lay with her, he sent her away, she found out she was pregnant, he called her husband in to have him be with, to cover up the pregnancy. He wouldn't do it, David sent him out there, had him murdered on the battlefront. One of David's own mighty men had him murdered out there. David is just eat up now with sin. And God's going to give David from Bathsheba, two sons. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 27. When the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. You know what happened to this son? Listen to this now. This son was born and died because of the sins of his father. You get that? This son was born and died because of the sins of David. The Lord is not pleased with sinfulness. And a child was born and became the innocent sacrifice for the sins of his fathers. That's who Jesus was. But then, Bathsheba's not done. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 24, And David comforted Bathsheba his wife, and went in unto her, and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. You want to hear some interesting things about Solomon? Let's look at it. Here we have the first coming of Christ. And he dies the innocent death for the sins of his, of his forefathers. Sins of mankind. And then we have Christ coming again. Who's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. And all the nations are going to come in unto him. Study the life of Solomon. Okay, you want, to, you want a number? This is interesting. 700 wives, 300 concubines. Do you know how many that is? That's 1,000. Okay? And by the way, during the reign of Solomon, it's a reign of peace. He doesn't fight any wars. His, listen to this. His father had put down all the enemies. Okay? So here we have Solomon. He has 1,000 women. And um, then all the nations of the world are coming in and paying homage and honor to Solomon. Solomon is a picture of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ because he builds the temple and all this stuff. And I know it all went badness and that's why Solomon's not the real Jesus. 
the real Jesus, when he comes, he's going to build his own tabernacle. He's going to rule and reign a thousand years. All the nations are going to come worship him. And it's not going to go bad. I absolutely love this. Um, here we have another woman. We're not given her name. She's just the Shunammite woman, a great woman. And she's promised a child. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 16. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, According to the time of life. So here we have the child promised, the child born. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 32. The child died. When Elisha was coming to the house, and behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. What kind of promise is that? What kind of hope is that? To have hope in a dead child. God's not done. Verse 35. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed. Look at there. Seven times. And the child opened his eyes. The child opened. Seven times. It's like seven seals coming off a book, the book being opened up. That's the coming, the second coming of the Lord, the resurrection. The sun rose, it went down. Oh, the sun's coming up again. And I just, I, I love this, I love this. And so then we have Luke chapter uh, 2, verses, we have the, the, with the promise, the swaddling clothes. Um, Look at this, Luke chapter 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Then look at verse 27. And he came by the Spirit unto the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he up him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word for mine eyes have seen thy salvation now I want to stop right here Simeon represents a he's a he's a priest of the law okay he represents the law now that the child has been born Simeon says I can die now I can die in peace okay I want you just I just want to throw that in there so then he says mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles, that's what comes first. A light to lighten the Gentiles. And the glory of thy people Israel, that's what comes second. And so at the first coming of Christ, Jesus came to lighten the Gentiles. And he has done that. And now every nation in the world knows something about a Savior born in a manger. They, they may not understand all of it, but they know something about it. Truly a light is lighting the Gentiles. Their darkness may not comprehend it, but the light is lighting the Gentile world. But when he comes the second time, he will be the glory of his people, Israel. We mentioned that verse, that word back uh, when, when Hannah was talking about the man-child. Okay? John chapter 16, notice this. A woman when she is in travail. Stop right here. Uh, God, uh, years ago, God started showing me the miraculous beauty in the language structure of the King James Bible because I'd always heard this, you know, you know, for the, you know, peace, when they send, shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And I started looking at women that were in travail in the Bible, and I'm going, I think those are a picture of that. I think those are going to reveal what this travailing woman and why the Bible used that particular language there. And why does it have here? Notice this, John 16, verse 21. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. It's all about the coming, the birth. Of the man-child. Simeon had been promised this for years. Israel was groaning in travail. And finally the man-child is born. And now, and I've witnessed this with my wife. The, the pain and the suffering of childbirth. And as soon as that child is born, the pain, it's, it's like it's gone away. Because now she's holding the child in her arms. What a beautiful, beautiful picture. God has drawn for us in the scriptures. Now I want us to go to Revelation chapter 12. I want you to show I want to show you this. 
This is God speaketh once, yea, twice. The, the man-child has been born once. The man-child is going to be literally born again. A body. We, we right now are the body being prepared for His second coming. This is why when Jesus appears in the clouds in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that we go to meet Him in the air, in the clouds. We are now His body. And He is the head such a beautiful picture. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. 12 is a number for promise in the Bible. Go read Genesis 12. And out of, God said to Abraham, Out of thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Okay? That's the number of promise. So we have 12 tribes. We have the 12 apostles. Now her, her head, a crown of 12 stars. She bears upon her the promise of the birth of the man-child. And she being with child, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. In verse 3, there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Stop right here. Stop and think about Abel whom God loved. What happened? Cain, who was of that wicked one, killed him. Why? Because God had promised, God had promised that the seed of the woman was going to destroy the seed of the serpent. And there it is pictorialized there in Genesis chapter 4. When Moses was born, my goodness, I forgot Moses. When Moses was born, were they trying to kill him? Yes. But it didn't work. When Jesus was born the first time, did they try to kill him? Herod said, where is he that is to be born king of the Jews, that I may worship him? You little liar. Herod wanted to kill him. You know why? Because the devil that was behind him, I think the devil. You know how, you know how a dog can, can like sense danger or smell something coming? You know, animals have, have the awareness of, of smelling something that ain't right. And they're just kind of looking right. I've hunted deer enough to know that the deer can sometimes know you're there before you know they're turkeys. The smartest animal in the woods. They've got a brain this big. But, buddy, they know how to stay alive. And I kind of had this idea that a dragon, the dragon, he can smell a Savior coming from a mile away. You notice, you go back to Exodus chapter 1 and 2, you, you see that rise up, we have a new Pharaoh rising up, and all of a sudden, uh, th these God's people are in bondage. And now, all of a sudden, Pharaoh wants all to have the, have the Hebrew, Hebrew children killed? Are you kidding me? I think the devil was going, I smell a Savior. Something's up. Same thing happened when Jesus was born the first time. The devil was going, we got to kill this child. We have to kill this child. And there he is. He was the, he's standing before the woman, ready to devour her child as soon as it was born. He hates the man-child. In verse 5, she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was... I love, I love this. I'm going to turn in my Bible before I read this next part here. See, I'm just, I just believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. And I just believe the language structure of the Bible. And that's really all I've done. I've shown you the language of the Scriptures and how miraculous and how, how much revelation is embedded just in the words of the Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive. Notice the dead rising first, the Old Testament, and then the New Testament. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne the birth of the man-child, the promise of the coming. We tend to view Bible prophecy as these terrible, cataclysmic, people dying in the streets events. And yeah, there's a lot to that because before the woman gives birth, there is the travail. But the travail is necessary. The hardships are